the book of Titus, chapter 1, the book of Titus, chapter 1, and verse 1 and 2. And uh, our series this, mor- this month uh, is Order in the Church, Order in the Church. And I want to call your attention uh, as we're reading from the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, a slave of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ. I have been sent to proclaim faith to those God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. Amen. I want to just preach about um, this morning, order in me. Order in me. Anybody else tired of all of the chaos of our culture that is all around us? I mean, brothers and sisters, just look around. You have the chaos of conflict and war as going on in Ukraine, the chaos of confrontations and violence as our streets erupt uh, with crime and killing on a daily basis. We have the chaos of confusion, even with this transgender and sports, uh, the chaos of combatant politics and the chaos of complicit news. These days, you don't even know who to believe and what to believe. We even have the chaos of compromised values, it seems as if they are no right and wrong issue any longer. And do you not know that this chaos is everywhere? It's in the streets, y'all. It's uh, it's, it's at the big time uh, Oscars and everything. It's even right here in the church house. Chaos everywhere. And if ever there was a time, it is now, y'all, that we simply need We need order, order, order in our churches. We need it in our community. We need it even within our homes. We need order. And if this order is going to take place, brothers and sisters, it's going to to require leaders who have exemplary leadership. Now, no, I didn't say a leader. Because oftentimes we are looking for one person. We're looking for one individual to lead the charge. No, for what it is going to take, it's going to take multitudes of us standing up and being leaders that can make a change in our community. John Maxwell says that leadership is influence, and since all of us have some influence somewhere, since all of us have some influence over somebody, since all of us have uh, influence in some way or another, God is saying, you are going to be the change agent. You are going to be the difference maker. He is going to use us in order to bring order to this chaos. That's what Paul is doing. Even in the book of Titus, Paul, after his first Roman imprisonment, he travels. He starts a church there uh, on the island of Crete. And when he gets ready to leave, he leaves his son in the ministry, Titus, in order to stay there and to raise up more leaders in the church. Oh, Brown, God is saying, I'm looking for some more leaders in Brown. I'm looking for some more leaders in Brown. And Brown, that's what I want to hang my hat on, that since the chaos is so widespread, you need to do your part to bring order. But you need to let the order start in you. Let me say that again. It's a long one this weekend. I want you to get it. Since the chaos is so widespread, look, as a pastor, I cannot do it by myself. Pastor Anderson cannot do it by himself. No, we need everybody on board showing leadership on your job, in your classroom, in your community. It's going to take all of us to do our part but we got to let that order start in us. Cliff, we can't bring order to the world if we don't have any order in our own lives and in our own homes. 
And yet, when we do it God's way, we can make a difference. Preach, I, I can make a difference. Yes, you can make a difference. But I don't have a pulpit to preach behind. You can still make a difference. I, I don't know Hebrew and Greek. I don't have a biblical degree. You can still make a difference. But I don't even have a huge following on social media. And yet, God is saying, each one of us can make a difference. But we got to start within ourselves. That's what I love about Paul in Titus chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Two short verses, and yet, and even within the greeting, Paul gives us exactly what he was doing and what we ought to be doing right now. Paul said, God has sent me in order to build up the faith of the chosen ones and to teach them of the truth of, of, the truth of how to live a godly life. That's what I, I'm supposed to do as a pastor of this church. That's what each one of you are to do, even wherever you serve and whatever you do. We are called to build up faith and to teach others to know the truth that shows us how to live godly lives. And in these ungodly times, we need more folks living godly lives. Uh, even the uh, Apostle John in, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 17 is one to tell us, do not love this world nor the things it offers you, for when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Uh, but for the world offers you only, and here it is, y'all, a craving for physical pleasure. That's the lust of the flesh. A craving for everything we see. That's the lust of the eye and the pride in our achievements and possessions. That's the, uh, uh, even the pride of of, of life, y'all. These are not from the Father, but they are from the, this world. And John said, this world is fading away along with everything that people crave, but anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. And so how do I do it, preacher? How, how do I do it, preacher? How, how do I bring order within myself? Because can I be honest with y'all? Look, all of us have lives that are full of CDs. Every last one of us in here have some CDs. No, I'm not talking about those, those little round discs, y'all. I'm talking about chaos and drama. All of us got the CDs of chaos and drama in our lives. And I know what some of y'all think. It just, it just started in the pandemic. No, y'all been messed up even before the pandemic. It was there before the pandemic even started. And yet God is saying, I want to show you how to have order in your own life. How do I do it, preacher? How do I, how do I get myself, my mind right to where I can have order in my life? I'm glad you asked. Here's what we need. We need freedom from self. We need freedom from self. Paul said that he was a slave. He wasn't even his own, that he belonged to God Almighty. We need freedom from self. Now, I need you to know this is one of those messages I'm going to be asking y'all to make confessions. And I know Baptist folks don't like to confess anything. And, and so here, here's how we're going to do the confession. I'll say it first so that y'all know I'm confessing. And then I want y'all to repeat it back to me as you confess it. Let, let's try this. Let's try this. We need freedom from self. I'm selfish. Now, everybody didn't say I'm selfish. Everybody. Some of y'all just lied right there. Amen. Y'all in? Y'all sitting in church? Y'all online? Amen. Those online. Look, look, look. Uh, 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 let's try it again. I'm selfish. Look, the truth of the matter is all of us are selfish. And Satan is bad enough, y'all, that he uses the pride of life against us. He knows that we are all about self and all about, look, the reason why he knows it is because of the statements that we make even if we don't say them out loud. Now, most of us don't say these statements out loud, but we're thinking them. And that is, I desire. Talking about our wants. And all of us have things that we desire and that we want. And, 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 and we're bold enough to say it. Look, it, it's different for different people, but every last one of us have desires. Some folks, a desire is chocolate cake. Some others, is chocolate leg. Others are chocolate martini. But all of us have desires and wants. 
I desire. And it is coming from, it's coming from self. But not only I desire, but I deserve. That speaks about my, my worth because oftentimes we feel as if we are entitled and we are owed something. Don't, 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 don't tell the joker what you want and, and he say he ain't going to get it. What? Ain't I'm worth it? Because we feel as if we deserve whatever we desire. We even say, I demand. That's getting into my will. The mere fact that, look, we are willing to do anything and everything to rise to the top. We are willing uh, to do anything to demand our way. We live in a selfish society. Self-centered. And each one of us suffers with selfishness. And so how do we, how do we overcome this? How do we get order within us? If we're going to need freedom from ourselves, here's what you got to do. You have to deny self. You have to deny self. When was the last time you denied and said no to self? No to something that you wanted. No to something that you felt like you deserved. When was the last time you denied self? Now, since I didn't get any amen, it's been too long of a time. It's been too long of a time. And what Paul is going to remind us in Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 14, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourself completely to God. And that's what Paul is saying. I'm a slave to God, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument uh, to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. God, give me the strength and power to say no to self and to be able to say like Paul, I'm a slave to God. I've been bought with a price purchased by the blood of Jesus. I don't belong to myself, but I now belong to God. He's the one calling the shots in my life. I'm a slave of God. You got to say no to self. You got to say no to self, deny self, freedom from self. But if we want this kind of order that Paul talks about, y'all, we need freedom from sin. We need freedom from sin because Paul said this whole truth that he is teaching us is how to live godly lives. And the only way for us to live a godly life, we have to have freedom from sin. Here's my confession. I'm sinful. I'm sinful. Look, brothers and sisters, every last one of us are sinful individuals. We were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity in sin that our mothers conceived us. All of us have sin and fallen short of the glory of God. And this speaks of the lust of the flesh. And Satan is busy. Because even when God saved us, what he did not do, he did not deliver us or take us out of these fleshly bodies. Now, I know old folks, we old folks who say it like this, I, I, I came to the Lord and I looked at my hands and my hands look new. Now, the truth of the matter, same hand. I looked at my feet and my Feet did too. Same crusty feet, same, same, same rusty feet. Because what God didn't do when he saved us, he kept us in this fleshly body. And as a result of being in this fleshly body, Paul is going to say, I'm at constant war with my flesh. Because sometimes I want to do the right thing. But sin is ever present with me. 
Paul said, who in the world will deliver me from this body of, of death? Y'all, look, we need freedom from sin. And here's how, here's how I, I, I know all of us are sinful because it's easier to point fingers at others instead of pointing out faults in ourselves. And, and some of y'all been online all week long pointing fingers. Talking about what you would have done, what you, what, and look, it's easy to point fingers. It's easy when you ain't in a situation, when you, when, when, look, it's easy to, instead of pointing out your own faults. So y'all came to the right place. I'm going to tell you how bad and messed up you are this morning. Let me, let me tell you how sinful all of us are. My heart is wicked. That's where you need to remind yourself that my heart is wicked. When it comes to this fleshly side of our life, Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Before you say what you will never do, before you condemn somebody else and try to act all holier and mightier than somebody else, you better recognize that your heart is wicked. But not only is my heart wicked, y'all, my head is weak. My head is weak because, because some of y'all, uh, you got a few degrees and got some th titles and stuff outside of your name. And, and well, you know what? I use rationality and logic. And yet you can get in such a tight, you can get in such a situation until you do something out of your mind. And anybody ever said to yourself, boy, what happened to me? How did I end up here? I never thought this. Why? Because our head is weak. And then our habits are wrong. Our habits are wrong, y'all. We, we develop practices and we start doing them over and over again and they become so habitual until they keep us locked and bound in the shackles of sin. God is saying if you want order in your life, you need freedom from sin. So what do we need to do? We need to die to sin. We need to die to sin. Matter of fact, Paul is going to use language like this in the book of Galatians. He says we ought to crucify and be crucified on a daily basis in order to die to sin. Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. Uh, uh, don't you uh, realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Oh, brothers and sisters, we need to die to sin. We need to die to sin. We need to die to sin. How in the world, preacher, can I die to sin? How can I die to this flesh, y'all? Not only must we say no to self and to our own selfish desires, but we need to learn how to say no to the flesh. We need to learn how to say no to the flesh. Uh, whether it's the sin of idolatry, die to it. Whether it's the sin of pornography and the sin of addiction, the sin of gambling, Look, you need to learn how to say no to sin. Uh, we used to say it this way. I have two natures. One I love and one I hate. The one I feed will dominate. You, you got a spiritual nature and you have a sinful nature. Let me show it to you this way. Let me show it to you this way. How, how many of us like to eat? Amen. Amen. Some of y'all didn't raise your hand. And I'm looking at y'all. But, but most of us like to eat because the flesh craves food. How many stress eat? My goodness, I, I, you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, somebody was saying, you know, you're vegan. Uh, isn't that so easy? I said, no, because vegan even eat sweets. And oftentimes in this pandemic, how many of us done put on 
more pounds. I appreciate y'all confessing. I appreciate y'all confessing. You got that stimulus check. You just went and bought you another outfit to a little bit bigger. You said, thank you, Uncle Sam. Government came in right on hand. But because of this flesh, we like to eat. Now, some of y'all, some of y'all, and this is the craziest thing. Look, look, you would go to the gym and exercise. Leave the gym and go order you two Big Macs. <laughs> Pastor, I'm, I'm hungry now. I've been working out. And you wonder why you're not losing why? Because you keep saying yes to the flesh. TJ, I, 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 I did design this picture for me, y'all. Look, some of y'all are like that. No amount of exercise will overcome a bad diet. You got to get to the point that you just simply say, no, flesh, you're not going to lead my life any longer. I'm going to say no to the sin that so easily beset me. And you can do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we say every week, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We need freedom from self. Deny self. We need freedom from sin. Die to sin. Say no uh, to the things of, this, of, of, of sinful habits. But here's the third one, y'all. We need freedom from society. We need freedom from society. Here's my confession. I struggle to fit in. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Because sometimes we think peer pressure is a young person disease. And yet the truth of the matter is all of us struggle to fit in. I struggle to fit in. And what we need, y'all, we need freedom from the society. We need freedom from society. Paul is going to say, not only am I a slave, not only have God called me to live a godly life, Paul said... God has sent me to the chosen ones, those that God has chosen, those that God has elected. Aren't you, aren't you glad that God picked you even before you picked God? Aren't you glad that before the foundation of the world, God had already put his son and slain his son for the salvation of our soul, written our name, and God in time called us unto himself. We're the chosen one. And since we're the chosen one, y'all, we cannot blend in to this society and the world around us. Because let's be honest, the society has gone wild. Society has gone wild. We wonder how crazy things are, y'all. Uh, Satan is so bold until he'll use society to change things to where we thought was wrong is now right. And everybody is trying to blend in with it. We need freedom from society. We need freedom from society. Somebody uh, came through the line. Boy, I, I appreciate uh, Brown Baptist. Y'all keep me on my toes. Somebody came through the line uh, at 8 o'clock and asked me, uh, are we going to ever be a woke church? I said, no, we ain't going to ever be a woke church because, look, when Jesus saved us, we're now no longer slaves to society. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand something. Don't ever let what society is doing mess with you and mess with me. Because we live in a society, according to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, a society that is called an evil good. A society that is called in dark light and light darkness. A society that is called in bitter, sweep and sweep bitter. We are living in a messed up society. And we need freedom from this society. Freedom from this society. Freedom from this society. The lust of the eye. What you see is not always what you ought to try to be. You need freedom from this society. How do I get this? How do I get this? Well, first of all, you got to ask yourself, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Whatever catches your eye gets your attention. 
And if you're not careful, brothers and sisters, you will blend in with the world, not even realizing it, just because of what you see. It, it, it is a tactic of the enemy. Anybody ever been thinking something and an ad shows up on your phone? And you're wondering, wait a minute. Now, I was just thinking that how in the world? They trying to catch our eye. Some of you ladies saw the outfit and it looked good on the model. And you done put it on high look. Now you want the brother to lie. Look, what are you looking at? We need to be mindful of what we're looking at. Everything in this society that looks like glitter, that looks like gold, it is not. That looks like it's the real. No, you better be careful of what you're looking at. But then be careful of who you are listening to. Because again, brothers and sisters, whatever got your ear will eventually have your heart. That's why even when it comes to the music, look, we need to be careful who we are listening to. Be careful of the stuff that you allow to go into your ears. Oh, you look good, girl. <laughs> You got a new hairdo? <laughs> oh, I like that outfit. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're telling him, my husband don't compliment me anymore. You better be careful of who you are listening to. And then we ought to be careful about what we are living for. Some of us have, have set goals and dreams and agenda that are not lining up with the Lord's dream and agenda for your life. And we're trying to do things our way when God is saying, this is the calling that I have on your life. This is what I want you to do. And so we need to be reminded what Paul said, we need the freedom from this society because we belong to God. How do I get that, y'all? We got to draw the line and separate. When it comes to the world, we got to draw the line and separate. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. Let me give you the truth of the word of God. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God says, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers. Separate yourself from them, saith the Lord. Don't touch their 50 things and I will welcome you. And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Oh, brothers and sisters, if ever there was a time we need some order, and the order is going to start when we recognize I need freedom from society. Oh, y'all, we can't think like, we can't talk like, we can't act like, drink like, uh, dress like, uh, uh, party like the world. No, y'all, we need to be set apart. We need to be different. We need to be unique. We need to draw the line and separate. And so this morning, Brown, order, order, order. We need it, y'all. We need it, y'all. And we need to ask ourselves, am I going to be selfish or am I going to deny self? We need order in me. Am I going to uh, be sinful or am I going to dive to the sin and change my habit? We need order in me. Am I going to fit in and struggle to be like the world or am I going to separate and draw the line? Paul said we need some order. We got to start within ourselves. What about your life? What about your life? I, I know you came here looking pretty good this morning, but what about your life? Is there some chaos in your life? 
Is there some drama in your life? Do your life need some order? Uh, some of y'all are saying, well, well preacher, I, I, I know I've been confessing that stuff, but really, I'm doing pretty good. Matter of fact, preacher, I don't have anything wrong with me right now. Well, you ought to take the time test. You ought to take the time test, the time test, the time test. The time test simply says, what do you spend the most of your time doing? Take the time test. How, how much time this week did you spend in prayer? How much time did you spend this week in the word of God? How much time did you spend this week sharing the gospel and the good news with somebody else? You wonder whether or not there are chaos in your own life. You wonder whether or not you need order in your life. You need to take the time test. Do you spend all your time on TikTok? Do you spend all of your time on your social media? Do you spend all of your time playing your game? Do you spend all of your time uh, watching uh, the game? Oh, brothers and sisters, take the time test. Because God is saying we need order in our own lives. Not only take the time test, but y'all, we need to take the treasure test. We need to take the treasure test. What, what do you spend the most dollars on? What do you spend the most dollars on? Uh, 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 look, look uh, the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Are you spending all of your money on the clothes you wear? Are you spending all your money on the house that you live in, on the kind of car that you are driving? You ought to take the treasure test. Because I need you to know that when you have order in your life, do you not know God will give you a spirit of generosity and you'll find yourself, instead of trying to get, 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 grab, 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 you'll find yourself wanting to give, give, give. Because God is all about generosity. Take the treasure test, the time test, but then you ought to take the taste test. Take the test test. If you ever want to know whether or not there's chaos in your life, you ought to ask yourself, what do you eat? What do you drink? What do you smoke in order to make this body feel good? And brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If you're using the things of this world, if you're using the drugs and the alcohol, I need to remind you of Ephesians 5 and 18. Paul said, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. No wonder Paul said to Titus, Titus, I want you to know I'm a slave to God. I've been bought with a price. I've been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord has sent me on a mission, and my mission simply is to build up the faith of somebody else and to teach them of how to know the truth that can really lead them to live in a godly life. And God, that's what God is saying to us right now. I've given you the answer. And then the answer is right here in the truth of the Word of God. If we want order in our schools, it's going to start right here in the Word of God. Because the Word says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it if we want order in our homes. It's right here. The answer is right here in the Word of God. For the truth of the Word of God simply says we ought to submit to one another. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Wives, respect your husband. It's right here in the word of God. If we want an uh, even order in our society, uh, the answer is right here in the word of God. For the truth of God's word is saying to each one of us, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. We have the answer on how to live a godly life. And I don't know about y'all, but when I look at the world and I look at how messed up this world is, I don't want to conform to the world. No wonder Paul is going to say it like this in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God uh, and which is a reasonable mind and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and when you start doing it God's way 
when you take the truth of God and begin to build your faith on the word of God when you start living a godly life verse 2 said we have confidence we have confidence I don't know about y'all but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but I'm going to lean on his everlasting name I got confidence I got confidence of eternal life in other words I'm in a win-win situation because Paul said God does not lie if he said it that settles it and I'm in a win-win situation I know we've had a lot of death but Paul said the word of God says for me to live is Christ and to die is gain when you recognize that stuff y'all you get to the point where you stop wondering and worrying and stressed out about everything because I'm in a win-win situation I'm a winner either way it goes why because I got eternal life in the future but I got an enriched life right now because he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I am his own I got everlasting life in the future but I got enjoyable life right now for the God I serve he said I don't have to wait till I get to heaven but he can give me joy unspeakable joy and this joy that I have I didn't find it wrapped up in a purple bag this joy that I have I didn't find it by smoking some dime bag this joy that I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away God got confidence y'all that in the future I got a perfect life for over in heaven no more sickness no more dying no more crime I got a perfect life in heaven but I got a protected life right now for he will give his angels charge over you to guard and keep you in all of your ways he promised lo I'm with you always even to the end of the world over there I got paradise in the future but I got a positive life right now Jesus is in the future and Jesus is walking with me very much right now and that's the truth y'all of this gospel that yes I'm sinful yes I'm selfish yes I struggle but here is the good news Ephesians chapter 2 Paul says it like this we were just like the world disobedient we were under the wrath of God on our way to a burning hell but God who was rich in mercy but God who loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son Jesus and I'm too glad that the truth of the gospel is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life Jesus said no greater love has a man than this that he would lay down his life for a friend I'm glad that Jesus one Friday morning on an old rugged cross in order to bring order he went to Calvary they hung him high they stressed him wide they nailed his hands they spiked his feet they speared him in the side put a crown of thorns on his head and oh good God almighty he hung his leg in the locks of his shoulders he died to bring about order he was buried in the grave to bring about order but I'm glad Sunday morning he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands order 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 Jesus said come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for my yoke is easy my burden is light anybody willing to testify 
Can you testify this morning that I came to Jesus just like I was? I was weary, wounded, and sad, but I found in Him a resting place, and He has made me glad. Anybody glad that you came to Jesus? Anybody glad that He put, took the liquor away? Anybody glad? That he stopped your whole monger in ways. Anybody glad that I don't look like what I've been through? Because Jesus, he cleaned me up. He dressed me up. He brought order up where there was chaos. I got peace. Peace. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We couldn't do it by ourselves. But oh, with the help of Jesus, with the power of the Holy Ghost, He brought order. He brought order. He brought order to our lives. That's where he's got to start. That's where he's got to start. It's got to start in you. It's got to start in. It's got to start in me. You want order in your home. You want order on your job. Let it start in you. Jesus help me. You, you, matter, matter of fact, you, you ought to pray like the song writer said, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Humbly I ask thee to teach me your will. While you are working, help me be still. Though Satan is busy, God is real. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. A bride on my tongue. Let my words edify let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight take charge of my thoughts both day and night order my steps in your word please order my steps in your word i want to walk worthy my calling to fulfill please order my steps lord and I'll do your blessed will. The world is ever changing, but you are still the same. Oh, if you order my steps, Lord, I'll praise, I'll praise, I'll praise, I'll praise, I'll praise your name. That's my prayer. That's my prayer.